After sitting through England, Labour to a 1-0 victory against Romania the other day, I decided to go for a quick rummage in my DVD collection and pull out the greatest movie about football ever made. So yeah, let's take a look back at Escape to Victory, also known as Victory in the US of A. Which is an American-British-Italian sports war film that takes the nugget of a true historical story the core of the Great Escape's narrative substituting tunnel digging with the beautiful game sprinkles in some stellar actors such as Michael Caine and Max von Sydow, a dash of international superstar footballers like John Walk and some bloke called Pelle and substitutes Steve McQueen in the token American role for Sly Stallone. All adding up to being by far the best movie about football, but I'm getting well ahead of myself here so let's start at the very beginning. The film is actually a remake of the 1962 Hungarian film Two Half Times in Hell, which was directed by Zoltan Fabry. This in turn being based on the supposed death match in which FC Dynamo Kiev beat a German Wehrmacht team whilst the Ukraine was occupied by Nazi Germany with the Dynamo team then being shot by the SS after winning the match, as the SS had warned them, lose or else. Bear with me here whilst I go on a little bit of a historical tangent to explain the fascinating true story behind that supposed death match. The Kiev City team FC Start, mainly composed of former pre-war Dynamo and Locomotive Kiev players, that represented the city's bread factory number one did indeed play a series of matches against various teams including the Nazis. They played seven documented matches in July 1942, winning all seven, including one each against the German artillery and German railway teams. They then went on to play twice against the German team Flakelf, first on August 6, 1942, winning that 5-1. Three days later, a revenge match was organised at Zenit Stadium in Kiev, with a crowd of 2,000 people attending, all paying 5 rubles each to enter, this being the so-called death match. FC Start again won 5-3, sadly only the first half of the match is documented. The Germans opened the score with Ivan Kuzmenko and Makar Honcharenko with two replying to make the score 3-1 at half time. Afterwards, the winners drank a glass of self-made vodka and met at a party in the evening, with one of the Germans taking a photograph of both teams showing a relaxed atmosphere at the match. After this game, FC Start beat Rook winning 8-0 on the 16th of August 1942, Two days later, the Gestapo arrested six FC Start players at the bakery and a further two two days later. Three of these players were later executed in February 1943 at a forced labour camp by the Germans, with various reasons being given for their execution, all entirely unrelated to them beating the Germans in a supposed death match. One more player was also killed by the Germans at a much later date, sometime in March 1945, again for reasons unrelated to football. In fact, Ukrainian teams regularly beat German teams with records existing for 111 games that the Nazis had actually reported on in German-controlled newspapers, with the Ukrainians winning 60, losing 36 and drawing 15. All of the players arrested had actually been denounced as secret agents for the Soviet NKVD by the Rook manager Georgi Shvetsov to the Gestapo. Hence their arrests, as it was feared they could carry out acts of sabotage at the vitally important bread factory they worked at. The myth of the death match was actually a 1960s post-war Soviet propaganda creation to show the heroism of the Soviet population under Nazi occupation, with four of them being awarded posthumous medals of honour and five surviving players medals for battle merit by Brezhnev. The actual survivors of the German forced labour camps at the end of the war were in reality rounded up and then placed in Soviet death camps by the NKVD as German collaborators. It wasn't until recent years and the opening up of a former Eastern Bloc that the true story of the death match has come to light, with the Germans as late as February 2005 concluding that no link between the match and the deaths of the players existed. 
Escape to Victory was actually filmed in Hungary with the Hungaria Karuti Stadion standing in for the Stade de Cologne in Paris where the fictional match takes place. The movie was a moderate commercial and critical success earning back $27.5 million on a budget of $10 million and holds a 63% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Now I started this review saying that this was by far the greatest movie about football ever made and I absolutely stand by that claim because let's be honest it isn't a very high bar to climb over as a beautiful game doesn't it turns out survive the adaptation to the big screen usually becoming entirely unengrossing and looking entirely fake. Escape to Victory largely gets around both of these problems firstly by making the main focus of the movie the Great Escape narrative. It is by and large your usual POW escape caper movie for the vast majority of its runtime, focusing on various plans for escape from the POW camp, internal POW politics surrounding escape and the Allies ultimate plan to make the entire team escape from captivity right from under the noses of the Germans at the football match. This means that the stakes are far higher by the time we reach the match than in other films also based on the death match, such as the Vinnie Jones vehicle Mean Machine, which is itself a remake of the Burt Reynolds The Longest Yard, also very loosely based on the death match myth. This is where Von Sydow Kane and Stallone shine doing most of the bulk of the legwork required to get us to the football match. Stallone is, I guess, mildly, okay, massively miscast as the American goalkeeper, but it's never something that has affected my love for this film in any way, shape or form. In fact, his absolute awfulness kind of sells his character for me. It also gets around the usual problem of football looking entirely fake in films by employing actual professional footballers as both the Allies and German team. This is how the international superstar John Walk came to star in the film as his Ipswich team, who were even more miraculously one of the best teams in Europe at the time, provided most of the players. With Russell Osman and Kevin O'Callaghan being the other players to be named cast members, Kevin Beatty stood in for Michael Caine for filming of the matches, as did Paul Cooper for Sly Stallone. These players were then supplemented by aged but genuine superstars in the shape of England World Cup winner Sir Bobby Moore, Brazilian legend Pele and Argentinian Ozzy Ardiles, with several others filling out the cast. With Pele being billed as being a Trinidadian and Ozzy Ardiles just not being given any country of origin at all, but he's supposedly from Costa Rica or Mexico. These players obviously look entirely natural when playing the game, when combined with the fantastic way the match is shot, largely using close-ups of the ball and quick cuts and slow motion to capture what is as close as you can get to a realistic looking football match as I've seen in a film. The soundtrack also does a huge amount of legwork, carrying this film here with composer Bill Conti borrowing heavily from the last movements of the Leningrad Symphony, it is so rousing that if you aren't in tears by the time Pelly equalises for the Allies and the crowd are in full voice singing the French national anthem, then you are a stone-hearted individual who deserves no joy in life. As if you needed another reason to watch this, did I mention gloriously mustachioed footballing superstar John Walk is in this, even if his one line is dubbed due to his overly broad Glaswegian accents. So that was Escape to Victory, in my opinion, the greatest movie about football of all time, based on a Soviet propaganda myth that is itself somewhat rooted in reality, starring Sly Stallone and John Walks Tash, and how the hell can I even forget about Pelé's wonderful slow-mo overhead kick? I highly recommend this one if you are a fan of the beautiful game. Anyway, if you enjoyed this or you didn't, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Give us a like and maybe even consider subscribing. Next week we're going to do something else. Biblical epics, which is a viewer request.